The reason we're making this film is to show how we all work together, the theorists and the experimentalists, to try and solve a problem. We've all got techniques which, at the end, are complementary, and they all add something to the story. The theorists were able to understand how the gold interacted with the nanotubes and what the effect of a plasma treatment would be. The experimentalists were able to test this, and finally the experimental guys in Spain were able to see if these made good gas detectors. Our gas sensors are made with carbon nanotubes with metals on the surfaces. The carbon nanotubes act as scaffolding and the metal particles sit on the surface. So we want to detect benzene, a molecule like this one. And the benzene, for some metals, will prefer to bond to the metal rather than to the tube. So benzene arrives and it bonds to the metal cluster and there is some electrons that move from one from the benzene to the car to the metal cluster to the nanotube and we measure how the resistance of the tube change when the benzene has been bonded to the metal cluster uh, gas molecule come and react with the partic uh, gold particle on the wall of carbon nanotube and i can measure the resistance change using this system at the beginning of the project uh, we decided to use uh, gold uh, clusters on top of uh, carbon nanotubes. So what I'm doing is first uh, I put uh, nanotubes on a TM grid. I'm going to my uh, evaporation chamber and there I evaporate the gold on top of the nanotube. So when this is done uh, I'm going to the transmission electron microscope and I look at the results. So you have the, the nanotube here, the carbon nanotube. Uh, the scale here is 50 nanometer. And you can see that these black are the, the gold clusters. So you can see that they are quite elongated, uh, very different shapes. The gas absorbs on the surface of the metal particles, and hopefully we detect this as a change in resistance. When we test uh, the sensor based on gold, it doesn't work. Uh, no resistance change. The trouble is that if we just put the metal on the nanotubes, it forms these large particles, and that's not very good for gas detecting. Here? we have a perfect carbon nanotube. Okay, it's a single wall nanotube. We perform calculations for how gold interacts with carbon nanotubes. The interaction between the tube and the gold atoms is pretty small. So the binding energy of the cluster uh, to the tube is small. This means that when we take a tube, uh, for example, we take this pen as a tube, example of the tube, and the, the gold atoms are landing on the tube, they're pretty mobile. So they are going to uh, drift on the tube surface. Gold atoms, both of them, are moving and they may find that this finds it, this one. So they bond each other. And they like this. They like to be bonding. And there are more gold atoms that arrive and they are all bonded within the same area. And that's why gold make those big clusters on the pristine nanotube. We perform calculations for large clusters and we can see that they sit interacting very weakly with the nanotube. So can we use the calculations to predict a way to change this and improve the bonding? We want to have metal particles as small as we can and as many as possible. So what we have to do is to modify the surface of the carbon nanotubes in order to achieve this. Well, if we wanted to do this in the real world, imagine a non-stick frying pan. How would we make it sticky? We'd attack it with a Brillo pad. CD is like my carbon nanotube, pristine, perfect. And the water is going to be like the metal. So we see clustering on the sides of the pristine and we see very good wetting on the side of the plasma-treated tubes. If we attack the nanotube with an oxygen plasma, it rips holes in the surface. We want to improve the surface of the carbon nanotube so we have a better dispersion of the gold clusters. So what we are going to do, we are going to do a plasma, uh, oxygen plasma. So this is my oxygen molecule, and my oxygen molecule gets broken in the plasma and I have oxygen atoms. They arrive to the surface and they break some of the atoms like this. So atoms are being removed 
and we have here a hole. Uh, we take, for example, this atom off. It will happen that the two carbon atoms here, the neighboring one, will get closer, and the third one here will stay with an unsaturated bond, as is shown here. So now the situation is pretty different. Uh, these carbon atoms have some electrons here that can be used to make new bonds. So let's take, for example, an oxygen molecule. And actually, uh, studying this structure, we see that one of the atoms goes here and the other sits in between uh, other two carbon atoms. Now if we do calculations of these defects and we look at how gold interacts with those, we find that gold sticks to these defects. Our gold atom, which is here, comes to the surface. And it moves very fast all over here. The bonding is very weak, but all of a sudden comes close to this vacancy. And it kind of like, it likes this vacancy, so it's harder to leave. So it stays longer from here. It stays longer around the vacant, oxygenated vacancy. We have more. They all arrived and they all get clustering. All the gold atoms get clustered around the oxygenated vacancy. So if we have tons of oxygenated vacancies around the tube, we are going to have tons of gold clusters. So if we have lots of these defects in the nanotube surface, the gold migrates over the nanotube and sticks to them. This should, in principle, result in lots of smaller metal particles on the surface. But does it work in reality? Well, the groups in Namur, in Brussels and in Luxembourg have tried this experimentally. By using different oxygen plasma treatments and then putting gold onto the nanotubes. It's first uh, I put uh, nanotubes on a TM grid, then I, I treat this nanotube in my plasma chamber. After I, I'm going to my uh, evaporation chamber and there I evaporate the gold on top of the nanotube. So when this is done, we have a drastic change in the size of the clusters and also in the dispersion of the clusters on top of the nanotube. This is for the, the pristine nanotube. And here is the result for the oxygen treated nanotube and both the same amount of gold and you can see that when you treat uh, the nanotube with an oxygen plasma you have uh, very small clusters that are well dispersed all along the, the nanotube surface and uh, I think it will be very good to, uh, to produce a gas sensor with uh, this type of clusters. In principle that should make a much better gas detector. So does it work? The group of Radwan and Edouard in Spain have been testing these. Good news that uh, gold gas sensors work uh, for some gases. The bad news uh, that uh, they, they doesn't uh, detect benzene that we won't detect really. So back to start again. Although this didn't actually work as our gas detector in the end, this isn't a failure, this is science in action. We have to test things, we have to have ideas and move forward, and we have to eliminate things that don't work. If everything worked first time, it wouldn't be science, it wouldn't be research.